welcome back for another video. In this video we've got a wildcard team for Gamic 13. If your team needs the repair then the international break is always a good time to activate it given the opportunity to catch some price rises and you can avoid some price falls as well and obviously react to any potential injuries over the break if any. Even if your wildcard is used or you're saving it this one's got good food for thought on which players are the best picks right now. It's a very affordable draft as well that every one of you will be able to afford. With some time to pause over the international break, it's the perfect time to join Fantasy Football Scout. You get tons of extremely useful FPL tools. My favourites are the data tables, which I use in every video and for decision making. There's the fixture ticker tool, which I use for spotting rotations and good fixture runs. There's player comparison for an in-depth breakdown between players and plan FPL for planning your future transfers. Click the link below to become a member. It also supports the channel. So let's get straight into the team and in goal it's Ariola. Hear me out on this one. Although West Ham have been poor defensively, on the bench we've got Flecken, who's got Arsenal Gaming 13, so Ariola has to start. The benefit of having this pair is that in Gaming 18, when Brentford blank, you can play Ariola, and then in Gaming 20, Brentford are predicted to get a double game week. It's Burnley away for Ariola and Gaming 13, who are the second worst in the league for expected goals this season. The defence is Gabriel, Mitchell, and Saliba. Double Arsenal defence, which does block you from adding an extra attacker alongside Saka. But right now the defence is where the value is. After the crazy 4 all draw to close the game week, Man City have actually dropped to second for expected goals conceded this season and Arsenal are up into first, best in the league. Raya will miss game week 13 due to being on loan from Brentford, so it's a big game for Ramsdale who will be filling in. If you don't like the double Arsenal defence then Gabriel's the one you drop, Saliba is more nailed. Realistically Gabriel is glued, or whatever you call it a notch below from nailed. He might miss one out of every eight games for example, which over the rest of the season is a very small handful of matches. Given the price difference between the two, if you've got Gabriel not Saliba, you might look at that and say I'm willing to accept that once in a while. Mitchell's got Luton away and Palace will have good clean sheet odds for that one after the break. Guahi's perfectly fine as well and he's 0.1 mil cheaper. Anderson's 5.1 mil now, which is perhaps too much for a Palace defender. Although he does have a little more potential for attacking returns, probably not enough to justify a late entry at 5.1 mil. Mitchell has Bournemouth home in Gamic 15 as well, which is another good fixture to potentially start him in. The other fixtures he's benchable in, and there's some good coverage on the bench. The midfield is Bowen, Salah, and Bumo, Saka, and Palmer. So one notable player missing here is Sun. It is a risk, but it's the sort of gamble that's a reasonable one, and it'll send you up the ranks if Spurs struggle, and especially if Bowen delivers. In theory, without Richarlison and Madison, they should suffer an attack, but also without ball playing centre backs, Romero and Van de Ven. Romero is just out for another two games, obviously, Van de Ven potentially out till the new year. Looking at Tottenham and West Ham's fixtures side by side, who actually scores more between Bowen and Sun here? Despite the massive price difference, you can't confidently say Sun does. Or perhaps if you just look at the next four only and then buy Sun before Forest in five game weeks' time. Bowen's currently seven points behind Sun as the third top scorer midfielder in the game. Let us know your thoughts on Spurs in the comments and if you agree. Salah's a no brainer on the wild card. He's even a captain shout versus City. Especially if your team's got no Haaland, then he's probably the best option, maybe Bowen. He's got 7 goals and 3 assists in 12 games against City, and he's perhaps the best captain in Gamic 14 and 15 before Haaland's got Luton in 16. The title race is well and truly open now, with Liverpool currently second, a point behind City, and Salah's going to be pivotal in that run. It's never ideal when you've got a midfielder or a forward against one of your defenders, but it does happen. And Bumo's home to Arsenal, and a complete bargain for 6.8 mil. His 10.79 expected goal involvement can only be beaten by Salah among midfielders. He's averaging over two shots in the box per game, and expected return every 100 minutes. Again, he's got the blank in game at 18, but we've planned around that with the wildcard, after which point you'll be ahead of the curve if the double falls into game at 20. Saka's only blanked twice all season, which is crazy consistency and exactly what you want in an FPL asset. Despite that, Arsenal definitely not at their absolute best yet. They're 7th in the league for expected goals so far. Liverpool, Chelsea, City, Villa, Newcastle and Brentford are all above them. As we approach the winter period though, it's going to be key that we have nailed players and as many talisman as possible, and this team's packed with them. Between the 1st and the 31st of December, there's 7 game weeks, every 4.4 days on average. It's going to be an epic month of FPL, but if you have too many players that aren't nailed, it's always going to be a month where you'll end up frustrated by random benchings. So players like Mitoma, Diaby, Foden, Zinchenko, Walker, Jota, maybe even Darwin are the types of players you might want to ease out as we hit the busy period. 
There's tons of money in the bank with this team, so you could even get Sterling over Palmer, but there's no harm in having money in the bank for a rainy day. And is Sterling actually worth the premium over Palmer? Four penalties is fortunate for Palmer, but he's playing really, really well right now. He's created five big chances, and he's had seven big chances himself. Chelsea hit an amazing run of games over the winter period, so one Chelsea attack is sensible, and doubling up likely will work out well. And Kunku is expected back soon after the break, so the signs point towards Chelsea being a great team to hop on. The front two is Watkins and Haaland, the two top scoring fours in the game. Watkins does have tendencies to frustrate at times with big chances missed, but he's passing the eye test overall and the underlying numbers are solid. You can't argue with 14 returns in 12 games. They do have a couple of tough home games in 15 and 16, but are aware of their home form and they are capable of getting a result against anyone right now at Villa Park. The Spurs fixture actually looks good after the break. Don't be put off by the grey fixture difficulty rating colour. As mentioned, Spurs about Van der Ven and Romero, which could spell a lot of opportunities for Watkins. Odogi's also missed international duty for Italy with an injury as well. Whether that's a real injury or a quote-unquote international break injury remains to be seen, but that'd be another weak point if they end up with three of their favoured back four out, or as a minimum two out. Let's skip over Haaland. There's no case to be made for justifying him or going no Haaland now. They're on their way out of a tough fixture run, and he's arguably the best captain for Gameweek 13 after the break. If you haven't got him in your team, then put together a plan to get him back over the next couple of game weeks. You'll need him in all likelihood. It's hard to say he's actually come out on top in terms of no Haaland versus the Haaland gang. It might have all evened out now. On the bench it's Flecken, Colwell, Archer and Simicass. 1.5 mil in the bank, you might have more or you might have less. It's definitely a trick we can play on ourselves though. Just because you have that budget, you feel like you're obligated to spend it. You'll find somewhere better to spend it later more often than not. So as a reminder, Man City playing the Club World Cup during Game 18, hence the blank for them in Brentford. And the Premier League tend to reschedule postponements as soon as they reasonably can, and Gameweek 20 is a free midweek for both teams, particularly when City have the potential to go on a deep FA Cup run that could cause other postponements. So if that does happen, the Gameweek 20 would look like this for them in Brentford. Flecken's a non-issue for the blank in 18 with Areola for coverage, so it's in Bumo and Haaland the two players that would drop to the bench. If the double does get announced, then in Gameweek 19 or 20 you could sell Watkins for Alvarez, and that works great to quadruple up on the double. And there's other players like Vissa, Doku and Foden who could be great picks for the double as well. While we're talking double game weeks, we may as well talk about triple captaincy. Haaland home to Sheffield United and Brentford is begging for the triple captain on him. Will there be other better opportunities though? It really depends on how other teams do in the Cubs. For example, if Liverpool reach the League Cup final, then they could get a good double later in the season. I expect most are going to go for Haaland though, rather than risk a better opportunity later. City of course may end up with a later double themselves as well. Just on Colwell then, he missed game week 12 of injury, but he should be back after the break. Chelsea's 15.1 expected goals conceded this season actually ranks 5th best among all teams, so he's a set and forget starter over that easy run. Let us know what you think of the team below in the comments. We'll certainly do another wildcard video after game week 18 as well, which is another good wildcard window if you can hold out till then. See you soon for the next one.